Viewer discretion is advised. When I was nine years old, I would often hear odd noises coming from either my closet door or beneath my bed. My parents explained that the noises were nothing more than the house groaning. I bought into it after a while and soon didn't think much of the noises, that is, until one particular night. I was having trouble falling asleep and was cuddling my little stuffed bear when I heard a scratching sound against the inside of my closet. I rolled my eyes before trying to fall asleep again. That is until the door handle began to slowly turn and the door started to open. Cowering and shaking, I saw a long and disjointed, black, monstrous arm release the door handle. Stepping out of the closet was a black, demonic-looking creature with goblin-like features. In fear, I watched it get low to the ground and proceed to stalk me, licking its lips and pointing sharp claws at me. Before it could pounce upon me, my teddy bear Caesar jumped from my arms and entered a combat stance. Two orbs of light then appeared above its head that transformed into a wooden sword and shield respectively. The monster let out a hateful cry before engaging in combat with Caesar. The creature was swift and strong, but Caesar was smart and tactful. He countered with sword slashes and finally weakened the creature to the point he could slice its head off. I watched as the monster's head rolled away from its body before disintegrating into a dark mist. Caesar's weapons then vanished as he scurried back to my bed, patted me on the head, and promptly became inanimate again. Utterly baffled by the experience, I went to sleep without questioning what had happened. I never saw Caesar come back to life again, or another monster for that matter. I know I wasn't dreaming of what I saw. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Keter Class Object SCP-6852. SCP-6852, also known as Where Best Friends Are Made, are hostile entities of varying appearance that are consistently described as scary, terrifying, and monsters by young children. Instances of 6852 have been identified by the Foundation as entities hostile to young children. Regardless of their appearance, all instances tend to have long teeth, claws, or other sharpened appendages. These creatures typically live in or manifest under beds and within closets, most often in the room of the child. During the day, they tend to be inactive, instead of opting to kill their prey during nighttime. While instances of 6852 are perfectly capable of killing children with relative ease, they relish in playfully hunting them. This is hypothesized to be a form of entertainment for 6852 instances, scaring the children greatly before pouncing on them. Oddly enough, if the child who is being hunted hides under their blanket, 6852 will not harm them. This is due to their preference of seeing their prey before killing them. In addition to their sharpened appendages, 6852 instances are graced with two abnormal properties that aid them in their hunts. The first is that they can produce anti-mimetic camouflage, rendering them invisible to anyone but young children. Second, their bodies are able to silence noises within any localized area, such as a child's bedroom. In order to combat the steadily rising number of attacks by instances of 6852, the Foundation created Procedure 6852-BEAR. This procedure is carried out through the Build-A-Bear Workshop Corporation. Yes, the company was created specifically for this purpose. As for the procedure itself, it seeks to make artificial copies of SCP-6330 to fight 6852 instances and protect the children in these cases. The process is as follows. First, a child chooses the type of bear that they want, accessorizing it as they so desire. Then, an employee will stuff the bear with stuffing infused with Elan Vita Energy, or EVE. The employee will then give the child a fabric heart and instruct the child to tap and rub the heart, as well as telling the child to rub the heart on a part of their body to give the bear a gift. For example, rubbing the heart on one's head will ensure the bear will be the smartest bear alive. This completes the thaumaturgical ritual and the bear will now activate when in the presence of a 6852 instance or when not looked upon by a living entity. The creation of these artificial instances of 6330 has resulted in the termination of 6852 instances around 97% of the time. However, things have started to change. Good morning, Director. Thank you for agreeing to meet with me today. I, well, I have some news that I believe you need to hear. Go on then. You sounded distressed in your email, so I assumed it was quite important. Thank you. Well, I was going over the number of attacks by 6852 instances, and you told me to let you know of any changes in data. And as much as I hate to say it, well, you see... Relax, Dr. Had. What did you find? All right. Okay. 
Okay. <sighs> it is estimated that within 10 years, one in four children attacked by 6852 will die, and procedure 6852 bear will be able to kill instances of 6852 only 7% of the time. How? Why the sudden jump? When did this happen? I thought the numbers were relatively stable. The instances of 6852 are becoming stronger, and fewer children have been coming to the workshops. Of course, many children have been saved by simply hiding under their covers, but our artificial 6330s are losing a lot more than before. Damn it. All right, here is what we're going to do. We will do free giveaways, donations, and get more artificial 6330s out in the world for children. I'm sure we can spring for some cash for marketing as well. As for the increased number of dying children, what do you have in mind? I have an idea, but I'll get back to you on that later. For now, let's focus on the task at hand. Together, Dr. Had and Director Anan initiated a successful marketing and donation campaign to get more artificial 6330s out to more children. As the increasing number of 6852 instances became too much to handle, the artificial 6330s were given a secondary function. Director, we need to talk. I knew this would happen, but first let me… What the hell were you thinking? Having the stuffed bear to stand aside when it fails to kill the monster and let the child die under its hands? It's for the greater good. Once the monster vanishes, it will come out of hiding and obtain the child's Eve and put it into itself. That will make them stronger than before. We will then retrieve the bear and pass it on to the next child. But at what cost? We're talking about human lives here. Surely we can figure out a better way. But there is no better way. We are being inundated with anomalies and we are low on resources. It's not ideal, but 6852 cannot be contained, nor can it be prevented from manifesting. So, for now, this is the best damn thing we have against something as unpredictable as this. I hate this. This isn't right. This isn't fair. They're just kids. Nothing is ever fair in this world, Dr. Had. Which is why we have to be fair. We are the foundation, for goodness sake. We're supposed to protect humanity. We're supposed to be better than this. You're being idealistic, Doctor. The world is unfair and uncaring. Look at the bright side. This will work out in the long run, and you'll be thankful. Believe me. For now, I've had someone to come up with some solutions to cover up the children's deaths by anomalous means, so you don't have to worry about that. You are dismissed, Dr. Had. Have a nice weekend. You're making a mistake here, Director. You're placing all your bets on something that you don't understand. Like you said, these things are unpredictable. So what if the anomalies adapt and become stronger? What then? Do we sacrifice more lives and hope for the best? I'll find a way and make sure no more innocent lives will be lost.